Hello, hello, hello. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you may be. Welcome back to my channel, My Love Release. If you've never been here before, thank you so much for clicking on my video. I am so happy you found me. I do so hope that you will like and subscribe before you leave. Become part of the Mama family. Mama's got you back, at least when makeup's concerned, and definitely when that makeup is cheap. Today is True Love Tuesday. We are talking about Natasha Richardson and Liam Neeson. Oh, such a sad, sad story. It's sad and tragic and beautiful and wonderful all at the same time. It is a truly, it is a truly wonderful story. I cannot wait to share it with you guys before we get started. A very special, very warm welcome to any of those that are new to my channel. I am so incredibly happy that you are here. If you enjoy the content, I do so hope that you will mash that thumbs up button. I hope that you will subscribe if you have not already. And I hope that you'll ring my bell, turn on your notifications, so that way, next time I upload a video, you can come right back here and we can hang out together again. Also, uh, if you've never been here for True Love Tuesday, I sit here, I do my makeup, and I tell you an absolutely epic love story along the way. I do have my eye makeup done already. That is because I cannot speak and do my eyes at the same time. I've tried and failed about a million times. So, I did make sure to film a TikTok on today's eye look if you are interested. I don't mean to toot my own horn, but to loot because it turned out so cute. I am so happy with the way that it turned out. It was exactly what I had envisioned in my head and just popped onto my eyes. Very, very happy about it. I used the Be Perfect Sensorium Chapter 1 palette. This is probably my favorite Be Perfect palette of all time. I love them all. I think they're all spectacular, but this one, the color story is just, oh, it is me and a color story. I love this. I love the blues and the greens and the shimmers in here are truly fabulous. I adore this thing so, so very much. But I think it's my most reached for Be Perfect palette as well. It's just whenever I'm like struggling and want to be inspired, this is the Be Perfect palette that I reach for. It's so fantastic. I did, of course, make sure to film a TikTok. I'll have that listed in the description box below, along with tags to all of my other socials, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, all that good stuff. Guys, if you are not following me on all my other socials, you definitely should go do that. I post fun content literally every single day. And if you're following me everywhere, you don't have to worry about missing a single moment of it. As for the products that I'm going to be using on my face today, I don't usually talk too awful much about the makeup that I'm using while I tell the story, but I will make sure to put a full list down in the description box. And of course, if you have any questions about what I'm using or how I'm using it, all you have to do is leave me a comment and I will get back to you. I think that pretty much, pretty much about covers all the bases. So let's go ahead and let's dive into this very, very sad, but wonderful, beautiful love story. So I like to break it down first and I like to talk about each half of the whole first and then we go into their love story together. If you see me looking over in this direction, it is because I am looking at my notes. There are quite a few of them for today's video, so I'm going to assume we're going to be here for at least an hour. That means that you guys should sit back, get comfy, get cozy, get you a big old glass of something to drink, maybe even a snack, and let's go ahead and dive into the love story. So Mr. Liam, Mr. Liam Neeson, who else has a crush on Mr. Liam? Because oh, he is so handsome, actually very accomplished as well. Just in general, a kind, nice, good human being, which is so much more rare than it should be. Uh, and I, I was very pleasantly surprised with everything that I learned about him through researching today's video. He was born William John Neeson on June 7th, 1952. Some of his best known roles are Taken, which we've all seen. He was in, what else was he in? The Grey, Schindler's List, uh, Gangs of New York. He's been in a ton of different things. Uh, I know there's a bunch that I'm not mentioning, but he's been around the block a time or two. A very, very accomplished actor. He was born in Ballymena, a town in country Antrim in Northern Ireland. I'm hoping I'm saying all of that right. He is the son of cook Catherine Kitty Neeson and his father, who was a primary school caretaker, was Bernard Bernie Neeson. He was raised in the Catholic faith in a fairly strict Catholic household, but he doesn't really have a ton. You know how like uh, a lot of like Irish, the Irish stereotype is that they're very patriotic and 
all about Irish Brotherhood, things like that. He's just not into that. Uh, he kind of briefly got into it while he was in a college, got into a little bit of activism, things like that. But, uh, you know, after that, he's just, he's just, he just loves his country, but not super, not super, super Irish, I guess. Uh, he was raised in the Catholic faith and was nicknamed Liam after the town priest. He has three sisters, Elizabeth, Bernadette, and Rosaline. I love all three of those names. Such beautiful, beautiful names. At age nine, Liam began boxing lessons, and this was another thing that I had not known about him. Actually, was a he's such an athlete, and I guess you would kind of like assume that because he's very tall and athletically built, but very gifted athlete. Uh, he took started boxing lessons at age nine at the All Saints Youth Club and went on to win multiple regional ti uh, titles, which I thought was super super cool before quitting at the age of 17. He acted in school plays throughout his teen years, but didn't really discover his love of acting until he went to college, uh, until he didn't discover his love of drama, until he attended the St. Patrick's College Ballymena from 1963 to 1967. In 1971, he joined a physics and computer science course at Queen's University Belfast, uh, but later left to work at the Guinness Brewery. Now, that's another one of those things. Like, you, if you are English or Irish, you love Guinness. You drink Guinness. Your blood runs Guinness. Uh, he said he doesn't really feel that way about the beer, but does enjoy a pint of it uh, every once in a while. Uh, he discovered a talent for football while at Queens, though, and was scouted by the Bohemian Football Club. There was a club trial in Dublin, and Liam played one game as a substitute against the Shamrock Rovers Football Club, but unfortunately, or fortunately, was not offered a contract. In his career, he has been nominated for an Academy Award, a BAFTA Award, he's been nominated for three Golden Globes, and two Tony Awards. In 2020, he was placed seventh on Ireland's, on the Irish Times list, list of Ireland's 50 greatest actors. Now, Mr. Liam was definitely, he was a ladies man, for sure. He definitely has been around the block a time or two. Uh, I had, I really hadn't known anything about his youth, just because when I really started paying attention to movies and things like that, he was already uh, quite a bit older, and that was, you know, far behind him at that point. But in the course of my research, I found out that when Liam first broke onto the scene, he was pretty highly in a demand, especially by the fairer sex, and he has dated around, dated around quite prolifically. He has dated quite a few women, and, uh, you know, he's kind used to be. He was very afraid of commitment. He was very, he was very much the let, love him and leave him type of guy. He was never in one situation or one relationship for too long. And, you know, for, again, as long as I have known about Liam Neeson and kind of like known who he was, he's been married. So I never really pictured him as that kind of guy to be a little bit of a scoundrel but he definitely was. His list of previous paramours is actually quite prolific. Uh, his first Hollywood kind of romance was actually with Janice Dickinson, which blew my freaking mind. He's actually quite a bit older than I just kind of had thought in my brain that he was, but he dated Janice Dickinson. Uh, they had an affair that lasted for several months back in 1983. Yeah, 1983. It was intense and adventurous and mostly about sex, honestly. Uh, it seems to me like Mr. Liam was a, a little bit primal. He was a little bit primal. A lot of his earlier relationships were very, very physical. And it like, kind of made a point to talk about the fact that they were physical. I think a lot of this stems from the fact that he was very, uh, very wary of any kind of commitment and because of that really made a point to you know let his partners know that this that you know this was all that they were going to be getting so either take it or leave it and a lot of them were just like okay well i'll take it you know a, a little bit is better than nothing at all so he has this relationship with janice it is incredibly physical it is incredibly uh, adventurous and he actually still speaks well she actually speaks very very highly of mr liam they had a whirlwind kind
kind of a fair in 1983. They just kind of like ran around experiencing new things, making love and enjoying life. They were both very, very young and just enjoying their youth. Uh, they split just a couple of months after they started and they both split pretty amicably. Their time had to kind of run its course and they split because they were two, they had two very, very different lifestyles as well. So their time together came to an end and they just kind of went off and did their own things. Now, shortly after Janice, Liam met Helen Mirren, the absolute queen of cinema. I freaking adore Helen Mirren. I remember the first thing I ever really saw her in was Calendar Girls. Do you guys remember that movie? I absolutely adored that movie. Thought it was fantastic. Helen Mirren is, oh, she's just like, she is that perfect. I want to say she's almost like a more adventurous kind of saucy Julie Andrews. You know, she's got that whole vibe. Like she's very like proper and prim and the voice and the accent. But then she'll get on screen and she'll take all of her clothes off and dance in front of a sunflower. Like I just think she's so freaking fantastic. She always plays such a such a boss babe uh, in a lot of her roles. I adore her. But I had never known that her and Liam, ne Liam Neeson had dated. And apparently their relationship was quite serious. So shortly after Janice, Liam met Helen Mirren. Helen was his first real love in Hollywood. So she was his first like genuine, I want to say relationship because of course he had been doing all of the, all of the love and love them and leave them, the short little romances, the flings, the affairs. But when he meets Helen, he was like, yeah, this is quality. Like he instantly uh, realizes and understands that this is like a quality standing in front of him. So he was like, yeah, we're going to be, we're going to be serious about this. So they get into a relationship. Uh, they actually met uh, in, uh, on the set of Excalibur, which was Liam's first major kind of cinematic role. And you've got Helen and she is a little bit more uh, versed in the whole Hollywood film process at this point. She's definitely a bigger name than him at this point as well. They're both sharing the same screen. They are playing love interests in the film. And of course, like happens in so many of these True Love Tuesdays, the romance on screen kind of carries over into real life and they start a real life romance as well. Uh, they met, they instantly connected and began dating in 1981. Uh, shortly after they like filming wrapped and they were done working on the movie, they actually moved in together and they moved in together and had quite a, a fantastic relationship for almost, uh, almost four years, uh, give or take a couple of months. But they were, they were wonderful together. Very, very happy together and, you know, cohabitated easily and effortlessly and all of those wonderful things for a good long while. Now, Liam and Helen still, again, they parted ways amicably. They still have nothing but wonderful things to say about each other. But uh, the reason that they kind of like split apart just because it was bad timing. Uh, after the movie wrapped, they lived together for four years. Helen has said that it was a classic case of bad timing. And though they separated, they remained friends. Liam has said that Helen is an incredibly se sexy and sensual woman, which I think comes across in her films and in her work just in general. Like you can kind of tell that, right? And he also credits her for helping him with his career, right? Because like I said, when they first worked together that first time, Liam, Liam was very much a newbie and Helen kind of took him under her wing just a little bit. She kind of showed him the ropes and not only that, but she also, you know, she kind of, I don't know, she was his first real love, like his first real love affair, whether it be in Hollywood or outside of it. She was his first real relationship. So, of course, uh, even if things don't end well, I think you always look back on your first relationship with fond with fondness, unless it was just really, really terrible and toxic. But theirs was not. Theirs was a really beautiful relationship. And they parted ways amicably. They still speak to this day. They're still friends to this day. Now, after his four year long relationship with Miss Helen, he dated Julia Roberts. And I had never known this. They were reported to have dated in 1988 after meeting each other while filming Satisfaction. They were both in the prime of their careers, but somehow managed to keep their relationship very much under wraps and very, very low key. It seems to me like so many others that Liam is a very, very private person. And though he doesn't like go out of his way to stay out of, you know, like 
out of the limelight and things out of the media attention. He doesn't go out of his way to like bring the attention to himself either. Uh, he is very content to just kind of like take a step back. And when it came to his relationship with Julia Roberts, they just they, they just kept it they kept it low key. They didn't tell anybody about it. Uh, and the only reason that people even like we're hinting about it is because I think a pap caught one or two pics of them when they were out and about one day. Other than that, of course, it hasn't been substantiated. It is just kind of like rumored, but they were caught out together, kind of canoodling. They managed to keep their connection below the radar. Uh, though their relationship was pretty short, it seemed rather intense. And again, another one of those super intense relationships. Uh, they were together for just under a year from 1988 to, yeah, 1988 to 1989. And then right after they broke up, she actually met her future hubby, Daniel Motor. Yeah, Daniel Motor. Next up, we have Babs. He dated Babs. You know, I actually call my sister Babs. Uh, he dated Barbara Streisand. Like how his list of former paramours is is it's 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 astounding he has dated some very very big big names literal hollywood royalty uh so they had a very very fleeting romance in the mid 80s the story goes they met at a party hosted by a mutual friend and instantly there was a like a connection you know bab gets what bab wants and she's like Hello, Mr. Tall, Dark, Handsome. Of course, he's got those baby blue eyes and that voice that just makes women melt. So, of course, Bab saw it. She liked it. And she she got exactly what she wanted. Uh, but, of course, even Liam, though we love him so much, it's just not enough to, to, to tie down the queen. So she kind of loved him and left him. They had a very, very short, very brief, but very intense uh, little fling. And then they kind of went their separate ways. Uh, next up, his ne next hookup seems to be pretty self-explanatory, actually. Uh, he was rumored to, like, kind of hook up very, very briefly with Sinead O'Connor. And, you know, I think this just makes common sense. This just makes sense. They're both Irish. I feel like they kind of experienced a little bit of a sense of, uh, what is the word I'm looking for? You know, the, the, the two different sides of the same coin that kind of thing. Uh, they dated very, very briefly. They had a short romance around 1989. Their relationship was secretive and details are scare scarce on the when and the why and the how of it, or even when it ended. We just know that it was there very, very briefly, like a flash in the pan, but then it was gone. Liam was connected to Dirty Dancing star uh, Jennifer Grey. Seems like she got around a little bit as well. Liam and uh, Jennifer, they met in the late 80s but again sadly the details very very shady don't really know too awful much about it we just know that you know it was a brief blip on their relationship timeline but it didn't work out and then and then and then it was with brooke shields this is another one that i just had no freaking idea about now brooke shields was uh, very much younger than him at this point she had just kind of like busted out onto the scene She's hot off of movies like Blue Lagoon, things like that. Uh, he met her in 1992. Uh, the two was, it was, again, a very physical attraction. Like, she is 11 years younger than him, but, again, Liam is just, he just is exactly what most women kind of drool over and dream about. And they had a very, very short, very, very brief uh, affair but shortly after he met up and hooked up with Brooke Shields, he met Natasha. And Liam instantly knew that Natasha was the love of his life. So he very quickly told Brooke, he, Brooke, he was like, you know, you're great and everything. But like, I'm, I'm sorry, I can't see you anymore. And then focused all of his attention on Natasha. As for Natasha, she wasn't quite as big of a name as Liam was. But of course, she did have her moments. She actually had some quite memorable and iconic roles. She was born Natasha Jane Richardson, May 11th, 1963. Some of her best known roles are The Parent Trap. She played the mom in The Parent Trap, which of course was probably one of her most recognized uh, roles, the one that she was, you know, recognized for the most. She was also in Nell. She was in The White Countess. She was in uh, Made in Manhattan. She played the really insufferable rich lady in that movie. I had no idea. For some reason, I just didn't put that together. 
in my brain that that was her until I read it. But I was like, oh my gosh, that was her. Uh, it's probably one of my favorite roles from her, even though she's like absolutely awful in that movie. She just did it so well. And her voice was so posh and just like, oh, I love it so, so much. Uh, she was born and raised in Marylebone, London. She was a member of the notorious Redgrave family. And so she was old money, very old money, like very old family name. And the Redgrave family is actually like a film acting, what does it say? A film acting and theatrical dynasty. So a lot of people from that family actually go on and have quite a bit of success either in plays or in movies, things like that. And Natasha, she definitely went and she followed suit. Now, she was the daughter of director-producer Tony Richardson, and then her mother was actress Vanessa Redgrave. Her parents divorced very sadly in 1967 when she was just four years old, so she didn't get a lot of time being part of a big happy family. However, she did maintain a... A, a great relationship with both her mother and her father and she actually made her film debut in an uncredited role in the what is was it the charge of the light brigade which is which was directed by her father now when it comes to her uh romances there's really nothing to speak of she entered into the business when she was so young and Quite honestly, she never did make it super, super big, so there's not a ton of literature out there on her, but it does seem that she is, she was very much a relationship girly. She actually got married when she was really, really young, so I had a really difficult time nailing down exact dates for all of this because I, got, I kept getting different dates and so <clears throat> I'm not exactly positive on dates here, but I got as best of a, an approximation as I possibly could. So before she met Liam, Natasha's only other notable relationship was a marriage. She was briefly married to filmmaker Robert Fox, who she met in 1985 during the making of Anton Chekhov's The Seagull. I have no idea what that is, but apparently it's kind of a big deal. They began dating shortly thereafter and were quickly uh, and were quickly married after they started dating. I think they dated and were married for around five years, but again, that's just an approximation. I'm not exactly certain. Uh, they, I think, they married on December fifteenth, nineteen ninety. The marriage only lasted a total of four years, I believe, uh, and they, defin they finalized their divorce on June 30th, 1993. Uh, he was 11 years her, sen her senior, and then pretty shortly after her divorce from Robert, she met Liam. Liam and Natasha met in 1993. They met while working together on Broadway for Anna Christie. Now, at the time, Natasha was fresh off of her divorce. Like, she's fresh out of the courtroom. She had literally just finalized her divorce from Robert. And at this time, dating is pretty much the last thing on her mind. She basically just needs to take a minute and recuperate. Uh, her divorce was kind of awful, right? Her marriage was a, almost a little bit worse. And she's just kind of trying to dive, dive into work and focus on anything other than romance and her love life. However, Mr. Liam had a completely, had he had different, uh, he had a different idea of how everything was going to go down. Y'all, the minute he laid eyes on Natasha, he was completely and totally smitten. It was, it was genuinely love at first sight. Natasha said it was awful timing. You know, she was, she's, a, she's very reluctant at first because of course she's, she's just, she's just, you know, she's just getting through her divorce and, you know, I, it, there's varying reports. Some say that she was just divorced. Others say that she was still in the process of divorce. Either way, there was no cheating that occurred, but she still needed to take time and focus on herself and, you know, try to recuperate from her divorce. But, you know, Liam comes in and he's just, he's so charming and he's so handsome and he is so into her. He is so very, very into her and she's finding it very, very difficult to resist him. And so she just, she just doesn't even try. She just gives into it. She's like, you know what? She felt the connection as well. She felt that instant chemistry that they had with each other. And she basically, she was like, we're just going to go for it. Let's just go for it. And that's what they do. Uh, Liam had quite the reputation as a ladies man at this point. His reputation had preceded him 
just a little bit. So before she accepts his invitation out to dinner, she kind of like does her research, right? She's like, she asks about him and she finds out, you know, he's quite a ladies man, has quite a bit of a reputation as a little bit of a rogue. Uh, and, you know, it's very much a, uh, a bed hopper shall we say. She also finds out that he was most recently spotted with Brooke Shields and kind of like reported to be having a little bit of a thing with her. And that had to be an incredible boost to her ego, right? You've got this absolutely just incredibly handsome man, right? He was going out with one of the most beautiful women in the world. And he says, he's like deuces and is all about her. Like he's all about Natasha. Like it's gotta be, an, it's gotta be incredibly flattering. So she does. She gives in and she accepts Liam's invitation to dinner. And of course, they go out to dinner. One thing leads to another. And they very quickly thereafter begin dating. Liam has said, he said, I had never had that kind of explosive chemistry situation with another actress before. Eventually, Natasha gave in to their mutual attraction. And when she was asked how she felt about him being such a ladies' man, and about, you know, if she worried about other women coming after her man, things like that. She said, I am so pleased that women fall in love with him because now I know why. Like, basically, you know, yeah, they want him. If they can take him, then I don't want him in the first place. But yeah, I think it's great that people want my man, you know? And this shows me how, first of all, self-confident she was. Even though she's just gone through a, a pretty brutal divorce, she still has this, you know, innate sense of just self-confidence that she's like, you know, if it's going to happen, it's going to happen. Like if he wants to be with me, he'll pick me. If he wants to be with me, he will decide to be with me. And then if not, then we weren't meant to be together in the first place. I love that. Despite their passionate courtship, Liam stopped all the little displays of affection and attention uh, as soon as they like were in a legitimate relationship. Now this goes back to the fact that he is very much a commitment phobe and I think he was genuinely terrified of of making a commitment and like being tied down to any one person and again I'm not exactly sure why this is some men are just wired that way but it seems like Mr. Liam was kind of living for the chase at that moment and because she had put up a little bit of a fuss and resisted quite a bit when they first started dating, Liam really had to turn up the charm. He had to turn up the bass and like really like pursue her and go after her. Then once he caught her, he didn't quite know what to do with her. So they're celebrating, you know, they're together and they're dating and everything is wonderful. But Liam is very much, he's keeping his, his thoughts to himself. He is not really expressing his feelings to her. He's not really talking to her. And Natasha is getting very, very irritated. She was like, this is a complete and total 180 from the man that I, that I agreed to go out with. And this all culminates in a, a birthday card of all things, right? So they've been together for a good long while at this point in time. Her birthday is coming up, and of course they're actors, so they're in different parts of the world at this point in time. So what does Liam do? But of course, what every other boyfriend in the world is supposed to do, and he sends her, you know, he sends her a gift and a card. Well, the card that he sends her, you know, oftentimes when a man sends you a card, it's, you know, I love you, I miss you, uh, I wish that I could be, I don't, I wish we were together, I wish that I could be there with you, uh, this, that, the other thing, right? Instead, Liam sends her a card, and in this card he writes, you're catching up with me, lots of love, Oscar. Well, what are, dude, what are you doing? What are you doing? Now, Liam is, of course, a little bit older, quite a bit older than Natasha. I think he's around 11 years older than her. Uh, so the fact that he's telling her that she's catching up with him, you never, ever, ever, ever tell a woman that she looks old or you ask her her age. You don't, women don't say anything. Don't say anything. So the fact that he's sitting there talking to her about her catching up to him when he's 11 years older than her, I mean, it was the straw that broke the camel's back and she basically, she flips her lid and I do not blame her. I do not blame her in the slightest. Uh, she was like, you know, we've been together, we've been dating for, you know, a couple of years at this point and the best that he can do is you're catching up with me, lots of love, like really. So she's, she's, she's incensed. 
<laughs> she decides, you know what, this is done. Either we're going to figure things out or we're going to be done because I'm not going to continue to waste my time with someone who's not going to commit to me and who can't tell me how he feels and who can't tell me that he loves me. I'm just not going to do it. So that's exactly what she does. She gets a hold of him and they sit down and they have a very, very frank conversation. Uh, a woman, you're passionate. It sounded like a card. Uh, she told Liam that it sounds like a card you give to somebody that you work with, not a woman that you're passionately in love with. She was like, do you love me? She was like, do you love me? What, what, what is going on here? She was like, if this is just a fling, that's fine. But then I need to start treating it as such because I am opening myself up to a world of hurt and it doesn't seem like you actually care. And at this point, Liam is faced with a decision. He has to decide, is he going to bite the bullet? And is he going to fully commit to this woman? Or is he willing to lose her? Because that's exactly what's going to happen. And he, he makes the decision right then and there that he can't lose this woman. She genuinely is the love of his life. And he is just a numb nuts and just is refusing to accept it. Uh, so he tells her, he says, this is real and this is genuine and this is something that has to be protected. And from that moment uh, forward, he, he put his all into their relationship. He opened himself up. He opened his mind and his heart to her. And instead of it, it went from something superficial and, you know, very uh, just, just not special to something deep and profound and beautiful and that is when the real love story started after they have this conversation very very shortly thereafter things go really really quickly their relationship progresses really quickly and before you know it they're actually married uh he pro he gets down on one knee and he proposes and of course she says yes like from the moment they had that conversation they pretty much knew that they were going to be this was forever this was the rest of their lives and there was Liam didn't see any point in just kind of delaying the inevitable so he proposes and they get engaged very quickly thereafter they get married and he married Natasha on a quiet little farm in upstate New York in the summer of 1994 after tying the knot Liam was quickly cast in the movie Nell fun fact I have been waiting this entire video to talk to you guys to tell you guys this fun little tidbit actually Nell is the official like official uh movie of my town it was filmed here uh, I actually my hometown is the uh, how do I how do I say that Nell was filmed in my whole hometown it's kind of our only claim to fame quite honestly uh but it was literally filmed like in my town square Y'all, I live in a very teeny tiny little nowhere town in the middle of the mountains, but it is incredibly beautiful here. Uh, we have lots of, we're like right in the middle of like big forests and things like that. There's a lot of like natural waterfalls and lakes and things like that. So they filmed Nell here. Yeah, so it's our only claim to, like, claim to fame, but yeah, uh, there's like big plaques all over town in the spots where... Uh, they used to shoot the movie and there's like uh that movie is like the, there's posters of it and every restaurant and every store we're all very very proud of it anyway uh very quickly after they got married he was cast in the movie Nell, and natasha's really sad about it uh because you know of course they just got married she wants to she doesn't want to leave her husband she doesn't want her husband to leave she does she does she's not ready to give him up yet she doesn't want to part with him yet. So she makes it her mission. She makes it her mission to be cast in this movie. She doesn't care what role she gets. She just wants to be able to go out on like a location with her husband. Think about it as like a little bit of an extended honeymoon, like a workcation. And she just, she just wants to be with him. So she sets out to get casted and she actually does. She actually, uh, she tries out for the role of like the main character and, but that ends up being played by Jodie Foster and instead in the movie, which is very, very apropos, she plays uh, his partner and kind of like his love interest in that movie. But a really fantastic movie. If you've never seen it, it's got Jodie Foster in it and uh, it, a very, very unique, very different kind of movie, but a good one nonetheless. Not one of my favorites, but a good movie. So when they work together, everything is going absolutely swimmingly. It is like it's married bliss. It's married bliss. It's everything that she wanted it to be and more. 
they're working together, the actual movie gets a really warm reception. People really enjoy it. And life is just, life is going really, really well. They're incredibly happy. Very quickly thereafter, it's time to start, it's time, it's time to start having babies. Like it's the next, it's time to take the next step. And that's exactly what they do. Uh, they end up having their life moved pretty fast for them actually less than a year after getting married they became first time parents to their son michael in the spring of 1995 and then only 18 short months later they had their second son uh daniel who was born at 19 months later they savored every second of their lives together they savored every milestone every every new uh experience they were just blissfully happy and I think this is where the tragic part of today's story comes in because my heart genuinely breaks for these people. Uh, they savored every second of the blissfully happy 15 years they spent together. They kept a low pri profile and stayed to themselves, focusing on raising their children and just enjoying each other. Now, Natasha continued to work, but again, her career never really took off quite like Liam's did. So it was pretty easy to, for her to take just a little bit of a step back and focus on, you know, the kids and doing her own thing. But also this gave her a lot more time to really focus on her charitable uh, passions. Now her father had very sadly died. Uh, I think he died in oh gosh, I don't know. I, I want to say in 2000, 2000 and something. But her father had died from complications due to the AIDS virus. And because of this, uh, Natasha was a passionate advocate for AIDS research, for AIDS charities, things like that. Uh, she uh, took a step back and really focused on being an ambassador for all of her charities. And it really became uh, her passion and her life's work. She actually ended up raising millions of dollars for AIDS research and charities uh, to help people affected by the disease. She was a really, really big deal. She has won, she's won multiple awards for her philanthropic, uh, her philanthropic endeavors, I guess. Yeah, so she was really, really dedicated to that cause. Now, in 2009, life changes in a really, really awful way. A really awful way. In 2009, Liam was cast in the movie Chloe, and if you guys haven't seen that movie, it's a really, it's a really, really good movie. It's got Amanda Siegfried in it, and uh, I think it also has Julianne Moore in it as well, but it was shot on location. So Liam has to pack his bags, and he has to pick up, and he has to go to Toronto to film this movie. Now his wife decides, you know what, our babies, our, our kids are a little bit older, uh, it's time maybe we could all kind of have a little bit of vacation. So she decides to pick up the kids, pack up the kids, pack her bags, and she goes with them to Canada. Now while he is in, I think he is in Toronto, he is in Toronto filming, and Natasha decides that she wants to learn how to ski right? Uh, they're in Toronto, they're in Canada, the land of snow. So she decides what better time than the, than now to start, right? So while there, she had a, uh, she signed up for a, uh, beginner's skiing lesson, right? She did that at Quebec's Mont Tremblant mountain, uh, for a beginner's skiing lesson. Now, while on her lesson, while, uh, practicing and, you know, doing what you do at a ski lesson, she actually takes a fall and she falls pretty hard, but she gets up and she thinks everything's fine. Like nothing is broken. Every, she's fine. Right. She continues her lesson and, uh, she finishes out her day for the, for the most part. Uh, and she's noticing that throughout the day, she has gotten a little bit of a headache, uh, and it continues to get worse and worse throughout the day. But by the time that, you know, it's nighttime after supper, she decides, you know, the lesson's done. Okay. I'm just going to go back to my room and I'm going to lay down for a little while. Well, she lays down and some really something terrible happens and the ambulance ends up getting called and she is rushed rushed to the hospital and she's rushed to the hospital and uh, of course family friends they call Liam tell Liam what's going on Liam packs his bags and he rushes to the hospital as well and unfortunately by the time that he gets there she is pronounced brain dead and uh, she had a 
hemorrhage in her brain. She must have fallen just perfectly uh, and something ruptured inside her brain. She got a brain bleed and she went into a vegetative state. Uh, she, her body just basically shut down. Her, her, her brain died and she was on ventilators. She was on life support. She was no longer there. She was no longer there. The machines were keeping her alive and they did this so that Liam could get to her and, you know, everybody could say goodbye, things like that. But as soon as he is faced with this decision, you know, I, he, he had the conversation with his wife, you know, that conversation that we all have with our significant others, if it ever happens, you know, like, do you want, do you, do you want me to keep you plugged in or do you want me to pull the cord? And <clears throat> of course he had had that conversation with Natasha and Natasha had told him that you just, I want you to unplug me. Don't keep me. Don't hold on to me. If I'm gone, I'm gone. I don't want to be a burden. I don't want to be a vegetable just laying uh, in the hospital bed. I just, you, you have to let me go. And Liam definitely does not want to make this decision, but the doctors are telling him that she is essentially, she's essentially gone. The only thing keeping her here is the machines. And if we turn them off, she, she, she'll, she will pass. And he has to, oh, I'm going to get, um, emotional but he has to make the decision to turn off her life support so he gives everybody time to say goodbye they all say their goodbyes he he hugs her and he lays with her and he is is absolutely broken during this entire thing and uh he ends up making the decision on his uh what day was it he ends up making the decision on march 8th 2009 and he decides to pull the plug and Natasha passes in Liam's arms, in Liam's arms in the hospital bed. Natasha passed on March 8th, 2009, leaving behind her husband and her two sons, aged 13 and 12. This was, this was traumatic. This was traumatic and a travesty and a tragedy and just completely and totally awful. And Liam spiraled, like he kept himself together and he really focused on his children focused on raising his children and basically threw himself into work he didn't take time to he just didn't let himself slow down he didn't let himself wallow but he was genuinely devastated uh and he has said multiple times that his wife was the love of his life and he is not sure that he will ever be able to love anyone again uh and since the death of his wife he hasn't he's not really dated anyone there were rumors i think in 2020 of an australian woman who had kind of caught his eye but she was married or taken or something to that effect and nothing ever really came of it and to this day he's still single at least to best to the best of my knowledge he's not been in a relationship since then uh, his children are pretty much grown at this point and you know they're thriving but there's not a day that goes by that he doesn't miss his wife and it's just it's so so sad he genuinely loved her like i believe they were genuinely soulmates i feel so so bad for him guys that is the end of this week's true love tuesday i hope you enjoyed it as much as i did this is the finished look what do we think do we like it do we love it let me know in the comments below i will of course post finished pictures over on instagram and facebook links in the description guys i love you so so very much as always no filters no fancy lighting it is just me sitting in front of my camera telling you guys an epic love story hoping you guys are enjoying what i'm doing and until next time Stay safe, take care of yourselves, and remember, you're important. Bye.